stop drowning your patients with septic shock. Welcome to day four of Crit Bits July edition. And today we are talking about the senseless act of drowning your hypotensive patients with sepsis. Now, this is not a video to debate the 30 cc's per kg for patients in septic shock, although it's probably too much. This is a video to tell you when you get to that threshold where you've given enough fluid and the patient is still hypotensive, then you want to switch to a strategy of vasopressors. Time and time again, I see people who give bolus after bolus after bolus for the patient who's hypotensive. And then there's some arbitrary point where the clinician decides, well, it's time to switch to a vasopressor strategy. There's two reasons why I think that strategy is wrong. The first reason is that when you have a patient who is in vasodilatory shock, septic shock, giving them more volume is not necessarily going to make that person better. What they need is antibiotics for the infection, and they need to tighten up those vessels. And the only way you can do that is with vasopressors like norepinephrine. But what I feel is actually the more important reason is that when you have a patient who's hypotensive and you leave them hypotensive by giving more fluids and more fluids, and you don't correct that hypoperfusion, their end organs are becoming ischemic, and that could increase their mortality. So the strategy I recommend is give your patient initial bolus, whatever you want that bolus to be, and if still hypotensive, then it's time to give them vasopressors, even if it's through a peripheral IV. Reverse the end organ hypoperfusion, and then if you want to give them more boluses to try and bolus off the vasopressors, that's fine. But do not get stuck in a position where you're endlessly bowling your patients, and then hours later you start them on vasopressors because they're still hypotensive. You're injuring your patients.